Soul Sacrifice Delta is the complete edition of Soul Sacrifice. So if you stumble upon the two titles, just know that they are almost the same game. The only difference is that Soul Sacrifice Delta is the complete edition, the one with all DLCs, and Soul Sacrifice is the base game. So what is the game? Well, it's like Monster Hunter and Dark Souls had a baby, but the baby ended up not having the best genes from neither of the parents. For Monster Hunter, it has the small beast slaying, the preparing before a battle and the epic boss battles, and from Dark Souls, it gets the looks. The only problem is that Monster Hunter, even if it requires many hours of grinding, it's more fun. The grinding isn't as repetitive as in this one. Basically, if you play 2 hours of the game, you saw 80% of the gameplay. It's ridiculous how repetitive the game is. You get a list of missions, some have cutscenes that are actually just some floating text with pictures, others don't have anything. There are three types of missions in the game. Beat up a certain number of small monsters, two, collect orbs in a level, and three, beat up a big monster. That's about it. That's about almost everything you do in the game. A mission lasts 10 minutes. Which is great considering that the Vita is a handheld, it's nice that they designed the game to be played in short bursts. And here is where I want to draw the line. Fans, if you hear this, please don't spam the comment section. These are my opinions. They are not written law, nor universally valid, I just want to say my point of view. The game is good only if you don't mind doing the same activity for around 100 hours. If you play stuff on the train on your way to work and don't mind adding a monotonous game to a monotonous work life, then go for it. But I don't recommend you to play the game for more than 2 hours. Or if you do, don't be like me and play it for hours straight. The game will get on your nerves. There are so many good games on the Vita and I don't consider this one to be one of them. You do the same thing over and over, you meet the same bosses, the same enemies, the same locations, it's making you crazy. It made me go crazy. This doesn't mean that the game doesn't have good sides. The customization menu is nice, you can change the appearance and even the name and gender whenever you want. You need to carefully choose your loadout, think which attack are the most useful in that situation. But unfortunately, this is valid only in some minor cases. Most of the time, the game will be just a button masher that looks like Dark Souls. Even if the enemies are creative, you see them for so many times that they will just annoy you when you see them. Also for some reason, you can't see the enemy's health bar. Only in one mode does the health bar appear. If you die and have an ally by and you choose to be sacrificed, then you will help your ally in battle in the form of a spirit. You can buff your ally or you can attack the boss, though attacking the boss gives 3 points of damage, it's not much, but at least you can't die anymore. Other options when you have an ally buy is to choose to be healed by the ally. And later in the game, when the battles are tougher, you will have to heal your allies. Also, magic attacks, cold offerings, get consumed and you need to get to specific spots on the map to replenish your attacks. Or you can save or sacrifice to replenish your offerings. In the game, there are two sides. The good, where you save souls, and the bad, where you sacrifice them. I mean, now they aren't good or bad, it's up to you. Thing is that the save option is marked with blue, and the sacrifice option is marked with red. You can alternate the two, so that you become a balanced sorcerer. The blue gives you more health points, while the red grants you more attack points. There is also a limit. You can't have more than a hundred added up. So you can for example get to the maximum of a 50-50 level. Level 50 in the blue and level 50 in the red and then you're perfectly balanced. There is also a nice handful of attacks you can use. You can also enhance attacks and enhance your character, you can also use black rights, which are forbidden techniques. With them, you can inflict a lot of damage, but they have a catch. For example, you inflict burning damage, 
But your defense is hot. And you need Lacrima, an item you collect often in the game, in order to erase the side effects of a black ride. Overall, even if the game has a lot to offer, it's way too repetitive and requires way too much grinding for me to recommend it to you. The graphics are amazing, and so is the gameplay the first hour you play, but once you play more of it, you'll be disappointed to see that you do the same thing for almost a hundred hours. There is no open world, you just enter a stage, do one of the three grinding objectives and get out. There is a lot of lore, which is nice, but I consider the gameplay just way too repetitive. Also, in order to get more story parts, you will have at some point to do pacts, which don't have any cutscene nor story. They are just grinding. You do the three grinding objectives until you question your life choices. If you don't mind grinding, try it. You will like it. The game has a lot to offer. But if you're sensible to grinding, I recommend you to avoid the game. It looks great and plays great, only that what you see is almost everything you do in the game. Okay, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and terribly thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.